I'm standing outside the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center here in Cincinnati, and it's just perfectly placed uh, right near the Ohio River, uh, which was the natural barrier, if you will, uh, to slavery back in our nation, where people would, would try to uh, free slaves by getting them across this river uh, north of those slave states right here into Ohio. And it's just a real amazing reminder of how important freedom is. Freedom is a powerful thing. I, I've seen it played out in, just a, in such a simple way with kids. I will watch kids line up in a hallway at school, even at our daycare back at church. They'll line up and quietly uh, walk in a single file line. And then when they get to that gym where, they're, where they can have some recess time, they walk single file into that gym. But as soon as they hit that gym floor, they raise their hands and just start screaming. Ah! I mean, I've seen it every time. Every time a kid walks into that gym, they just start screaming and they just start running because they're free and they love that freedom. Freedom. It's a powerful thing. And friends, you and I were made for that. God hardwired us to crave freedom. I think it's why we've really struggled during this pandemic season because, you know, we crave freedom. And in many ways, we feel like our freedoms have been taken away from us during this pandemic. But listen, I want you to know and understand this. If you are saved, then you are freed. At the very core, everything that God has done through Jesus Christ has been to set you free. I want to read to you from Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 20. God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. This is really powerful. It says this, it's teaching us this, that grace is greater than all our sin. Grace is now greater than all our sin. So when sin is here, grace is here. If sin raises to this level, then grace is even higher than that. This is what the Bible teaches us about the powerful and amazing grace of God. But now, God knows us well. He inspired Paul to keep on writing because if we're human nature, like, oh, wow, so if my sin is here, God's grace trumps it and gets higher, so then maybe I just keep on sinning then because his grace keeps overcoming. Well, Paul writes about this as he continues on in Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 1. Well, then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ, Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death, for we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Friends, sin and death have no power over the one who has placed their faith in Jesus Christ. No more, no power over us anymore whatsoever. And, and as you saw described there in Romans 6, when we place our faith in Jesus, it's like we are unified with him. We become one with him. And just as he died on the cross, we died to our sin. Just as he resurrected and stepped out of that tomb, so we are raised to new life. Now I want to read to you just one more quick passage in Romans 6. It says in verse 12, Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. It says, basically, don't go back to slavery. Don't go back to sin. When we actually continue to sin and choose to sin, it's like we're going back to that prison. It's like we're crossing back over that Ohio River, going back into slavery. And God says, no, 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 I, I've done everything to set you free. And I want you to live in that freedom. I want you to celebrate that freedom. I want you to live it out. This is really, really powerful. It reminds me of that moment when a woman caught in adultery was dragged before Jesus. And because of Mosaic law, she could be stoned to death in that moment. But Jesus said, he who is without sin, throw that first rock. 
And as it turns out, no one did. They dropped the rocks and they left. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Now go and leave your life of sin. And that, that sounds like, wow, pressure, leave your life of sin. No, no, Jesus wanted her to know and understand that you've been set free. You've been set free from the demands of the law. You've been set free from sin. You are not condemned anymore. Now go enjoy that freedom. Go and live it out. And that's what God is calling you and I to do today. When you call upon the name of the Lord, as it says in Romans 10, 13, you are set free. I can say that I am saved. On June 17th, 1988, I prayed and asked him to save me. That means I am acquitted, declared not guilty. I am saved, which means I'm adopted. I'm now a part of God's family forever. I am saved, which means I'm purchased. He bought me by the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, and He values me that much. I am saved, which means I am guaranteed. He's given me His Holy Spirit, which means that, that He owns me, He's got me, and I will spend eternity in heaven with Him forever. I am saved, and friends, that means I am freed. I am free forever. Sin and death no longer has a hold on me. And so friends, I invite you to take this next step. Ask God to set you free. Ask Him to set you free. When you do that, when you ask Him to save you, you are free from sin forever. You are free. No longer having to worry about, well, am I guilty of sin? Will God condemn me? Will I get to be with Him in heaven forever? The answer is, oh friends, thanks to Jesus Christ, you are free from sin. You are free from death. You will spend eternity with God forever in heaven, thanks to Jesus Christ.